everyone and welcome to my page. My name is Jessica Crane and I am an art elementary teacher. I teach grades K through 5. So today I'm just going to walk you around my room. We're already moving into October of this school year and I found that the layout of my classroom is very functional and easy for each grade level. I keep things organized and the kids, students safe but also they still have the ability to go around the room and be creative and get into different supplies in order to feed their creativity. So if you have any comments below after the video, um, please leave them. Also if you have any classroom ideas or organization or management um, styles to share, please comment below as well. I would love to see what you're doing in your classroom. So thank you and I hope you enjoy the video. Alright, so this is the front of my door. Um, I have decorated it in a paint splotch theme, creating masterpieces and falling to pieces as you can see. To the right of my door is some of my first grade artwork about Vincent Van Gogh. And to the left of my door is the art can that I created at the beginning of the year. Um, some fun just sign on board as well for the families and friends that come along to parent-teacher conferences. And then my whiteboard that I usually post a question and change every two weeks. Alright, so here are my passes for office, bathroom, and counselor that I have them use if they leave the room to go to any of those three. Above that I have my emergency plans. Um, my subs are aware of where they are just in case anything ever were to happen if I'm not here. I have some question cards or vocabulary words that we go over. We line up and we have some extra time. And then on my door is actually the artist rules that I have them see as they're lining up and as they're coming into the room so they're reminded of how they're supposed to be in the art room. So moving over to the right, we have the color station and this is labeled slot 1 through 10 and I have some different activities like color sheets, grid transfer worksheets, and there's some different exercises that they can work on if they get done early um, on any of the projects and I have them pretty sufficiently for any grade level that can complete those. So it's not a whole lot of work on me. And here's my bookshelf. Um, the top books are all the adult books. The middle shelf is for the children's books. I feel like um, reading is very important regardless of what subject that you're in, so I definitely have a large array of art books about different artists and different themes. Um, I have the games at the very bottom, and in the middle I usually put magazines, and also this is a beach ball game that I created. And you basically blow up a beach ball, you write some questions, like there's a question right there that what are secondary colors. So what I would do is I would throw this to a student that is sitting and being the best Mona Lisa that they could be, which is eyes facing forward, hands empty, and in their lap. And when they catch the ball, whatever question that their right hand lands on, they have to answer. And if they answer it correctly, they get a piece of candy. So they love that game. So this is kind of a wide range of my reading nook. Um, as you can see, I have a curtain on my shelf. My rule is if it's covered by a curtain, no touchy. So the students are not allowed behind the curtain. I tend to put anything that could possibly be harmful um, to the students behind the curtain. And I tend to do prep work behind the curtain for any projects and also um, just any extra supplies that I may have that I don't want boxes sticking out, um, cluttering up my room. Um, this is just some. So here's my data wall, and just because we're in art doesn't mean data is important. So as you can tell, I have my first quarter results all the way up there um, for each grade. And then here is our palettes for each grade level, just kind of testing them and keeping track of what they're learning, subject matter, historical culture, space, form, texture, shape, line, and color. And at the bottom is posted different things that they're supposed to be learning for that, um, for that grade level. And so there's a little bit more of um, information right there. Then at the bottom, I created these sit-in chairs for my students to come and read or do origami um, if they get done early with the project. Again, here's another curtain that's filled with different boxes, and we'll take a peek behind the curtain. Um, I have everything labeled. So as you can see, we got foam shapes, feathers, things like that. I'm not using them right now, so they're hidden behind the curtain. So nobody can see them, and they don't look like they're cluttering up my room. So we move over and I have a filing shelf and then two of these large um, tan metal cabinets. And inside these metal cabinets, I keep any of my student artwork that we may be working on and they haven't gotten done in class. So I have each little cover cubby labeled by teacher. 
And then for my fourth and fifth graders, they have portfolios, as you can see those manila folders, that have some scrap paper in them for them to take notes. And then they usually keep all their extra artwork in there. So this is how I keep their um, classwork hidden and out of the way so other students don't touch them. So I again, I have a shelf for each student. Also on these, I have vocabulary words that they're supposed to be familiar with for each grade level. Um, second grade has a lot this year, but it's just something for them to kind of visualize and see as they're coming into the classroom as well. My filing cabinet is labeled by grade, kindergarten, first, second, third on this one. And then I have a fish tank, and as you can see, there's some little frogs um, on top of each other, and I got, so they love to come in and see them. Their name is Mrs. Piggy, is the bottom one, and Kermie's the top one. So they love seeing those, and it just makes the classroom a little bit more enjoyable to come into. And then I have my yarn up top of those, and some decorative paper balls as well. And then we have this pillar. Um, the fifth graders' signatures are on it from years past. This is already something that had started by the time I got in here. Uh, I didn't want to paint it over because the kids really looked forward to it, so I decided to create a long piece of fabric to go over it so I don't have to personally look at it all year but at the same time I'm not erasing some memories that students may have and they can still look forward to that so at the end of this year I'll take that curtain down and the fifth graders will get to sign their name on the poll so we'll continue the tradition so as we're walking in here I have my little area for my food and my refrigerator I have my dry goods and candy at the bottom and I also have a coffee pot so this is my station the kids aren't really allowed past here unless I call them up. We have a couple more filing cabinets for more classwork. Above my desk is the um, art elements and principles. I have some some oil burners back there as you can tell because I like to keep my room nice and smelling good. My calendar, any artwork that the kids may have created me, and then my desk. And I have a document camera which is amazing. If you're an art teacher and you're not utilizing your document camera, I would definitely suggest do so. It's a great way to do draw with me's, to give examples, to read books, um, to interact with the kids. It's awesome. So I'll give you one more span of my desk, how I have it set up. I have my sub tub underneath. Um, you can kind of tell right there, that purple thing, that's my sub tub. And then my sub binder is also purple. Love the color purple, as you can tell. And another curtain. I usually do a lot of my prep work uh, over by my desk. So I put any student artwork or student projects that we're about to do and I need to prep something for it back there. Um, there's also my books, catalogs, things like that that I have back there. So moving over, I have another curtain again that has some more um, supplies in it that we're not using. And I made those personally, I'll kind of zoom in on them. Um, I went ahead and got palettes and just got some tissue paper and did the primary, secondary colors and all the primary and secondary colors together. So just another visual for the kids to look around the room and see. At the top of my board, I have some architecture starting from BC all the way over to current day. Um, we haven't started that unit yet, but when that happens, it's a great visual for the students. And then I have an encouraging quote as well by Ann Tucker, all art requires courage. Um, Cause I wanna make sure that all my students know that they can be artists. So on my whiteboard, I have this broken up into six squares as you can see. And what they are are basically the objectives for that grade level um, during that time. So I have kindergarten through fifth. So the students can look back at this um, square if they've forgotten what they were doing. And it could be a reminder of them of what the objectives of that lesson is. Since I only get to see the one or two times a week. The orange are pencil buckets, um, which I got this idea from my cooperating teacher. You put pencils and erasers in it and then you call your table leaders to go up and get their pencil buckets. So you're not sitting there taking five minutes of your 50 minute class period to pass out pencils and erasers. I also have five buckets of markers, crowns, construction crowns, colored pencils, um, and, glues and glue and scissors. So every table gets a bucket and the table leader is in charge of that. Makes cleanup so much easier, makes getting everything out so much easier, it's just awesome. So I have everything labeled where they're supposed to go so that students never have a question where. And then at the bottom, there's a the glue sponge. Um, basically, you just get a regular cleaning sponge and some Elmer's glue, pour it in there, and you have a glue sponge. Very easy and simple. I have some scrap paper, some fun scissors, highlighters, rulers, all available to the students when I ask their table leaders to go get them. So I have this awesome billboard that my third graders filled up with some abstract Zentangle art. I have a no-name station where I usually put new names. Thankfully, we're getting the back into the routine and put our name on everything. 
And here's my paper station. I have all my paper that I use regularly and my paper cutter. And then I got this idea from um, Cassie Stevens, but she does the word of the week and the artist inspiration of the week. And usually I have a poster up here right now. It's at home. I gotta have to laminate it, so it's coming. But there's usually a poster, and then I have a little frame that has the artist, um, the title, the medium, and date that it was created. So that's always fun to get a new unit started with, and to get the students excited about what we're doing, give them a little insight. So here's my smart board. Love the smart board. You do so much with the smart board. And then I found this funky clock that reminds me of Dolly's artwork, the melting clocks, the surrealism. So I had to get it. It was at Hobby Lobby for 50% off. How could I pass that up? But here I have my fun retro chair. And then I have my rules. I also got um, some of those rules from Cassie Stevens as well. She's an art teacher down in Texas. She's phenomenal. If you don't know her, look her up. And then I have my quiet circle, which the students know if they're coming in, they have to be the Arizona quiet talk. They can talk in the regular voice, whisper talk, whisper, and then silent talk, no talk at all. So I have artwork displayed all over my room. Um, and then I also have a book that I usually put like up there if I'm reading any book. It's kind of like an advertisement for the kids. So I have my drying racks, my curtains, my little terrariums up there. Um, and my curtains have little paint brushes in them. So that was just some fun touches. I have a fabulous metal rolling cart that I use for my clay. And then what did I miss station? So the students use this if they've missed a day of art and then they come in and they need certain materials, a piece of paper, hand out notes, anything like that. They come over um, to their folder and I have it labeled by grade. They find their grade and then they look inside the folder. All right, so we're moving on. I have a nice tissue paper rack up there. I have some of my examples, styrofoam plates. Then I have my paint station, and this is basically all my temper paint, my watercolor paint at the bottom, as you can see, and any acrylic paint I may have. I have every all my brushes kind of sorted out into, um, it's kind of a glare, but it says plastic brushes, natural hair, and synthetic hair, just in case it will deal with ceramics or something like that, and you need um, a natural hairbrush for that. So I know exactly where those are. I have a lot of palettes and things like that that our students use. And then I have all my shelves labeled so the students know exactly where everything is. And then I have this big gray shelf, which is phenomenal. Um, I'm gonna open it up and show you. But it's for all my construction papers, so it's not just sticking out. None of the daylight gets to it. And it has these phenomenal drawers as well um, for some supplies that I have. I have, you know, extra construction paper, cardstock, extra tools, and, and office supplies that I may have. So this is my favorite thing that I was so excited about when I came in because it's just a great thing to have. Give me a second. I'll close that. All right. And then we have our my sink area. Um, underneath this one, for example, I just have some cleaning supplies. No, really, nothing really fun. Um, and then I have my VTS station, so visual thinking strategy. Most art teachers are aware of this, and it's definitely being implemented and pushed in our district. Um, but this is, gets the kids thinking more abstractly about the artwork, what it means, how it connects with history. And so I have, I change this out about every two to three weeks. Then I have some VT questions that I may have the older kids write in their art portfolios when they come in as a bell ringer. So I have storage at the bottom, another cabinet. I have this phenomenal um, bulletin board that I put student artwork. And then I have my portfolio cabinet and um, I use this for paper, any of the posters that I may have. Just a good way to keep things safe and stored away. And then my think seat, just in case the student may be acting up. Um, that they kind of go there to kind of rethink. I have some think sheets in that folder inside the desk, as you can see, and they'll fill those out and give it to me, and hopefully their behaviors will be better. So I'm gonna give you one last span of my room. Also, before I forget, um, you see those colored pom-poms above? I call the desks to line up to, to get supplies and whatnot by their table color. So it's just a, another way of organizing the groups and letting the students know when to, it's okay to get out of their seats and when to get up. So thank you so much 
for watching this video. I hope I've given you some great ideas on how to organize your classroom and how to be more productive in a classroom. If you have any questions, please comment below. And if you have any suggestions or maybe ideas to share of your own, again, please feel free to comment or leave links to your blogs. I will definitely check those out. I'm always looking for new ways to decorate and utilize my space in my room. So I hope you have a wonderful, um, hope you had a wonderful time watching this video. And thank you very much.